On this Sunday afternoon, we welcome you to Stores, Connecticut. The Knights of UCF colliding with the home squad Huskies of UConn in the American. The Knights got a late start to conference play, finally got underway on the road in Philadelphia with a victory against Temple on Thursday. They meet these Huskies now 0-3 to start conference play, still looking for their first victory, but they have played some of the better teams in the league already early on their schedule. Of course, the Mustangs of SMU, a perfect 3-0 coming into today. Memphis also unblemished coming out of the clubhouse. And of course, the two Florida schools each year among your favorites both looking good at 1-0. and oh. On that note, we welcome you inside the broadcast booth here on the American Digital Network. Lincoln Rose along with Kit McConico. And, Kit, we take a look at this matchup. We mentioned the schedule has not been kind to UConn so far, but at home trying to make a mark for themselves against a very talented UCF team, but a team that has replaced almost half of its roster since winning the title one year ago. That's exactly right. A lot of new faces for UCF. The question is, can they repeat? They have some great young talent. We'll see how that mixes with the veterans. Take a look at the key to the matchup. How do the Knights remain unbeaten starting off 2-0 and oh here in the standings early on? For the Knights, it's all about winning the first half. They've outscored their opponents 7-2 to two in the last two matches in consistency. They've won the last two in a row. Can they make it three in a row and 2-0 and oh to start conference play? On the other side of the spectrum, how does Margaret Rodriguez get her first head coaching victory in this conference? Well, UConn has to strike first. They've been outscored 8-1 to one in the last two matches, losses to SMU and USF, and they have to figure out a way to take advantage of the home field just one in four here at home this season well you look at the Knights and of course a young lady who's been synonymous back there between the post Vera Varus she's been recognized as among those on the senior class award list and for good reason her accomplishments both on and away from the pitch yeah, Varus a fantastic goalkeeper you mentioned what she's done is already graduated in graduate school with a 4.0 GPA but on the pitch just over one goal against per match the reigning conference goalkeeper of the year allowed just one goal in conference play last season one of a handful of international players for the Knights today and across the way you talk about UConn well they finally gained some confidence in their back line and that allowed them to move Santos up front that was a big move Santos started in the back out of necessity now is back up front where she needs to be her first two games up front scored a pair of goals has two assists she needs to keep finding the back of the net for the Huskies Huskies at home looking to pick up a victory against the defending champion Knights of UCF. Opening kick coming up on ADN. People say we're big. Wow. Well, what is big? This is big. It's an energy. An opportunity. This is big, baby! So go on, dream big, because big is just the beginning. I got it. <laughs> this is big. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is our backyard. This is home. This is Yukon. Moments away from opening kick as the Huskies wrapping up a home stand. We mentioned the tough schedule here to start, but also some tough breaks for Yukon as another injury on their back line will keep a, ultimately Evillard off of that back foursome. Of course, they replaced the goalkeeper back. And the USF match, Molly Kerrigan, your starting goalkeeper today for the Huskies. Let's check in with Bill. Hey guys, good to see you this afternoon. Getting ready for this matchup. We want you to interact with us on Facebook all along here throughout the day. And our first interaction will be about these two head coaches. We've got Maggie Rodriguez from UConn, Tiffany Roberts Sejeda from UCF. These are two coaches who played in college. They played professionally together in the WUSA. And our first trivia question, we want to see if you know it out there, is who scored more collegiate goals? Hashtag Tiffany on one side, hashtag Margaret on the other. Let us know who you think scored more. We'll give you the answer throughout the day. Back to you guys yeah there's a great look from their days back in the WUSA when coach Rodriguez was in San Diego and of course uh, coach the Haydack was in a very friendly confines with the Carolina Courage 
Of course, she was a UNC Tar Heel. We'll give you a hint for that trivia. One of them was a striker, and one of them was a defender. That should be pretty easy to figure out who scored more goals, you would think. You know, that was when they met professionally. Those two actually also met in the 1997 Women's College Cup Championship match when North Carolina edged UConn for the national title. Uh, they have a great history together. They were the ones who actually produced that photo as we are underway in stores. Huskies in white, UCF in black, and again, UCF, your defending champions last year. What a campaign it was for the Knights. Making it back to the NCAA tournament with the automatic bid out of the American. They were unbeaten in American play, going 7-0-2 with the pair of draws. It was a 13-win campaign. But as you mentioned, a very different Knights team, almost 50-50 as far as new players and returners. But give those new players a lot of credit. They've adjusted very quickly, and they've made an impact. Huskies with a toss here. We've already seen an early touch from Molly Kerrigan. Her 13th match in frame. Most of those appearances have been in relief this year for Randy Palacios, but Kerrigan gets her second start now on the year, the third-year sophomore. I made her first start of the season in that loss to number 19 USF. Came up with two saves in that 4-0 loss for the Huskies. And tonight's team outscoring their opposition this year 15-9. UConn conversely being outscored 32-12. It is a learning process under a new head coach, Margaret Rodriguez, well-deserved promotion after a decade as the top assistant for Lynn at UConn. And, uh, I know they're excited about what the former Husky can do. She really wanted to bring back the culture that was around when she was there as a player uh, with winning championships being an expectation. But of course, that will take a few years to truly get her people in place. As opportunity building up here, first trip into the offensive third for the Huskies. As able to slip it through, but not enough behind it. As we see Kolchitsky, the sophomore, try to put one on front. A good start there, and now an opportunity with some open space. Can, USF, can UCF take advantage in the counter? As they will play this one into space, over to Scott. And UCF will win an early corner kick. Big opportunity on a set piece for the visitors from Orlando. Well defended by UConn. They didn't have numbers behind the ball initially. They got back quick enough. And now this set piece, their first real chance of the match. They've scored goals from set pieces, but they've come from the spot. Three of four and penalty kicks this season for the Knights. Andy Saray, six goals this year, just one assist. Will look to pick up another assist on this opportunity off the right boot. Keeps it low towards the near post, and the Huskies defense the first on it. Poorly taken corner there, played low and hard to the near post. No one in black in the vicinity, easily cleared away by UConn. If you're going to play it to the near post, you have to have someone making the move to the ball. If not, just go ahead and put it into the mixer, try to put it at that penalty spot and get ahead to it. So the Huskies survive the early corner opportunity given up to the visitors. Again, UConn. Could be a deceptive 0-3 start in conference play as they've played many of the preseason favorites have also been banged up early on. Yeah, UCF 3-1-1 one, and one in true road games this season. They've outscored their opponents 10-4 on the road, doing a very good job winning those road matches. Always difficult here in the American. That includes one road victory in conference. The 2-1 victory in Philadelphia on Thursday. They scored the first two goals before conceding one late. Able to turn on this one is Urbanek. Making her second start, the senior from Germany. First 15 minutes of this match are extremely important for the Huskies. They want to establish some possession, need to get something going. They can ill afford to go down early. And we'll have a foul here at midfield. You're looking at Kanye Plummer, the junior out of Jamaica was just with the Jamaican national team for their final qualifiers. A transfer from Southeastern. A ton of international talent for the Knights. A lot of players who play for their national teams, the U23, U21 national teams. Looking to find a crack in the back line. It'll be an own goal that gives UCF the advantage to start here in the fifth minute. 
Absolutely devastating for UConn, conceding the own goal just five minutes in. That is not what they were looking for to start. Amen. Let's demand the precarious situation in the first place. And it's UCF, your favorites here in the American, able to find the opening strike. Give credit to the Knights. It's a good ball into the top of the box. Tried to head it away, could not. Goalkeeper Kerrigan just a bit off her line, couldn't get back to it. Demoralizing start for the home side. UCF already looking for insurance here. Backline unable to recapture this ball. UCF, they'll press. They'll get numbers forward. They like to keep a high line. Try to win the ball back in that center third. You see everyone in white behind the ball right now. Everyone on their side of the midfield stripe. They're going to have to figure out a way to get numbers forward. As the toss here from Schiappa. Made all 13 starts so far. Psychologically, the question is for UConn, how do they respond? This team hasn't had a lot of success this season. You mentioned just two and 10 overall. They've lost the last five in conceding an early goal. They're gonna have to be strong mentally to come back. Again, two great coaches colliding here in the American, including a first year head coach and Coach Rodriguez, who got the promotion this offseason. Let's check in with Bill Spaulding for more. Lincoln, thank you. Kit, I just heard you mention the mentality about this group, and that was the key for Margaret Rodriguez. She said today it was all about her young group bouncing back mentally from a tough game on Thursday. She said she'll learn a lot about her young group this season, and this is really what this season's about for her. Young players who will play down the road. She wants to learn more about them every single week. Meanwhile, Tiffany Roberts-Sahedak said for this UCF team, it's all about building. She doesn't think they've hit their potential yet, but she thinks this is another step building toward their best soccer so that they're contending for an American Athletic Conference championship again at the end of the year. Thank you, Bill. And of course, the Haydack last year, not just championship winning coach, but was your coach of the year in the American. Sixth year with UCF after six years at Virginia Commonwealth. And well, of course, her associate head coach, what are the odds? Someone else with the last name Sahedak <laughs> and Tim Sahedak. They were co-head coaches at BCU. He is the associate head coach at UCF. And what a dynamic that is as they raise their two kids together in Orlando. They are both former Tar Heels playing at the collegiate level. And I asked, is there ever a chance you guys get to go home and not talk about work? And she said, yes, actually, by necessity of having an 8 and 10-year-old, you are actually forced to do some other things. That's exactly what she said, those daughters bringing balance to their life. But they said they love soccer and everything that it's brought to their lives, it's brought them together. It has been the focal point of their life. So they certainly don't have a problem talking about it. But nice to have a few distractions, if you will, as well. She was a teenager on that gold medal squad. And just too close in there, easily collected by Kerrigan. He liked the idea, sending the cross into the box. And Kerrigan just her second start of the season. And again, a reminder, both these head coaches playing collegiate soccer. Sahedak was then Tiffany Roberts in Chapel Hill for the powerhouse under Anson Dorant says, uh, of course, Coach Rodriguez, a UConn alumna as well. And I know Bill and everybody on Facebook right now would love to hear who you thought had more collegiate goals. There is a correct answer. In fact, one of these two coaches is the most prolific score, one of the most prolific scorers in their school's history. You can use hashtag Tiffany or hashtag Margaret to cast your vote. UCF already with a goal advantage coming in for the stop this time. Kerrigan able to keep it from crossing her line. Knights building on the confidence of that initial goal, dominating possession, pushing the ball up the pitch, working in that final third, trying to find that insurance goal just 10 minutes in. 
Lincoln, you mentioned when we spoke with Coach Sahedak, Robert Sahedak, earlier this week, she said, we haven't played our best soccer. For them, it's about consistency. They've won the last two in a row. They, they want to continue to build, get better each and every time out. But he said, all these new faces, they could be really good, but sometimes with these young players, you just don't know what you're going to get. Well, again, they've trusted their recruiting, and it's just a matter of who would emerge as leaders and provide the enthusiasm. Well, when you have a goalkeeper, the quality of the Knights, and here Harris, the, the Finn reigning conference goalkeeper of the year. Kerry Lawrence charging up the pitch. We'll swing it out to Kristen Scott. Scott inside the 18. The cross denied, and a nice job by those Huskies on the back line. Again, they have a new head coach for the first time in decades, Margaret Rodriguez. And this one chipped in. And this back line, you have to imagine, after conceding the own goal in the fifth minute, not letting their guard down at any moment. And there you see Coach Rodriguez. Shortly after Christmas was informed that she would be the next head coach at her alma mater. And she is such a detail-oriented individual. I asked her how hard it was to shift her old responsibilities to her assistants. Uh, but she has brought in some coaches that she has a great deal of trust in, including another former UConn grad and Coach O'Brien. Uh, toss here for Lawrence. Both coaches such a delight to talk to. They have such a lifetime spent in soccer with success at every level. We mentioned, coincidentally, they collided in that national championship match back in 97 and have maintained a relationship since then. UCF doing a very good job using the full width of the pitch, keeping possession, swinging it from one side to the other. Scott doing a very good job. Dangerous on this right wing. From the back line of the Knights, as they work it around. And that's how the Knights like to play. You, will, you won't see them punt the ball. Varys gets it, she will roll it out. They like to play from the back. They have confidence that they can play defeat. Quick touch into some space, able to run on it. Uh, nice job just running enough interference on that back line. It will be a corner kick for UCF, uh, but a nice effort there from Rachel Marchini. A beautiful ball right there. Orschman just couldn't get on to it, but it will be another set piece coming for UCF. Andy Saray had a goal against Temple in that 48th minute of the 2-1 victory. They'll set it up. 22-yard strike right into the pause. It'll spill loose, but Kerrigan recovers. Beautiful set piece. Perfectly played. Had a teammate coming up there to the top. Right to Lawrence. Lawrence, the senior, the Orlando native. Scorches the palms of Kerrigan. UCF, a great mix of local talent, so many good players coming out of the Sunshine State. They don't have to travel far, but also a lot of international experience as well. Coach Robert Sahedak saying, we want players that have played at the highest level possible, and they certainly have that. A lot of players going through youth national and even national team, depending on which country they are from. And of course, she appreciates how much of a hotbed Orlando is for talent. 11 newcomers for UCF, seven freshmen all from Florida. They had a couple of French additions after National Signing Day. We've already seen five start throughout the year for the Knights. That's a lot of new contributors in a championship program. And for UConn, their most talented class, well, it's, it's got to be that sophomore class as their head coach. Just all kinds of young talent, but they are young, and they are growing. They are getting better. Leon will try to link up with Daniko Lutschitski. Take a look at five different countries represented. Finland, Canada, Jamaica, Germany, as well as the United States. Almost all of them have played for their national team at some level, U-17, U-19, 21, 23, or the senior national team. And that is just a product of maintaining connections with old teammates over the years who are overseas. 
and being able to take their recommendations. And Tim Sahedek has had a few more frequent flyer miles as well, getting in some recruiting trips abroad. He's the one with those connections, making those trips to Finland, to Germany, to Jamaica. He may have enjoyed doing those a bit more before he had two young daughters. UCF Knights looking for insurance. They've held a 1-0 lead now for almost 10 minutes. An own goal conceded by UConn on a header back to the keeper. Top left corner just bends away. Otherwise, a great strike from Kerry Lawrence. Talk about Orlando talent, the senior from Orlando. Oh, she had eyes for that upper 90. That would have been an absolutely spectacular goal, but just continued to sail over the crossbar. Luckily for Kerrigan, it did so. Would have been her first goal on the campaign. Remember, UCF last year went through conference allowing goals to just two opponents. A 1-1 draw with USF, and the Knights have their insurance as Stephanie Sanders, the sophomore from Hamburg, Germany. She played in that U-20 World Cup earlier this year in France. And she's no stranger to the big stage. That time finds the back of the net, 2 nothing. Beautiful strike from Sanders. Grew up playing in that Werder Bremen program, one of the best in the Bundesliga. But it, it was really all set up by the poor giveaway, the poor goal kick from Kerrigan right to Sanders. Sanders did a very good job. Able to shirk off the defender coming in, trying to make a tackle. And then the beautiful left-footed strike doubles the Knights' advantage. I mean, that's Sanders' fifth goal already this year. And this is a young lady coming back from a torn ACL last year. Had to get ready for that U-20 Women's World Cup in France, where she had a goal and assist contributing. We've already seen her with that hat trick in the final non-conference matchup against Stetson in just 45 minutes of play. And what a bounce-back campaign it's already proven to be. She's just starting to find her footing. Coaching staff said that when she came back from that U-20 World Cup, she was exhausted mentally and physically. She's gotten a bit of a break and is starting to find her form. Huskies have been on their heels for far too long. As they are not content with a 2-0 lead. Looking for that back post, it'll slip away. Just a goal kick coming up as they're looking to connect with Orschmann. Huskies have to be very careful. You have players like Plummer, your center back, making runs, decisive runs all the way up through into that center third. And quite frankly, UConn just cannot have that. You have to win the ball up higher. Everyone back defending. And it appears that we're going to see a change in goal for UConn. Yeah, Randy Palacios had 11 starts through 11 matches this year. Molly Kerrigan took over against USF, but Palacios will now come back in mid-match. Palacios, 52 saves, a 2.57 goals against average in those 11 matches here in 2018. Now hard to blame that first goal conceded on Kerrigan. In the own goal, directed around her. Palacios, the redshirt sophomore from Northern Virginia. She comes into a very difficult situation. Her side already trailing two to nothing. I just want to confirm that Vera Varis is on the field. <laughs> she is the goalkeeper for UCF, a brilliant one at that, all the way on the opposite end here of the pitch. Your goalkeeper of the year last year. She's on the national list for senior class award for contributions both in the classroom and on the field. But she has not been tested. Uh, she's in the top 10 for UCF career saves and career shutouts. What an impressive young woman. You mentioned what she's done on the field. Absolutely outstanding. Gave up just four goals all of last season, just one in conference play. And has a 4.0 GPA in grad school, has already graduated with her undergraduate degree. Yeah, now would be a good time to work on any of those assignments she has, <laughs> working on a master's in both biomedicine and chemistry where she has that 4.0. You know, just uh, pushover courses. She has a lot going on. My hat's off to her. Plummer, beautiful move right there. And UConn, Plummer unable to connect on the final ball, but starting to make that run further and further up into the pitch.
UConn able to maintain possession here. A toss coming up. Big opportunity for the Huskies. Can they capitalize here in the offensive third? Good ball into the corner. Urbanek doing a good job keeping that one alive for UConn. Anticipate the deep throw. They'll try to put this one into the box and get ahead to it. And directing traffic, Leanne Keegan's senior out of Minnesota. Looking to cut this deficit in half. Solid toss to the top of the six. UCF with the first contact has not been able to clear just yet. And it'll be a corner kick here coming up for UConn. Very dangerous. That ball bouncing around the box was not cleared initially. Plummer doing the smart thing, sending it out for the corner. Let's quickly check in with Bill Spaulding. Guys, you talked about how there are 14 different international players playing in this game. So I bet we have people watching from all over the world. We want to know where you're watching from in the comments. We're loving the interaction so far. Let us know on Facebook where you're watching this game from. The most interesting places will end up on screen. Bill, thank you. This is Urbanek with the kick. Well delivered. Uh, a foul called will never give UConn an opportunity. All kinds of contact there with the goalkeeper. There's no opportunity to get to it. And again, you can comment in the chat portion from where you are watching. A very warm welcome to everyone joining us from across the globe, all these different countries represented. UConn conceded that own goal in the fifth minute. UCF has since been able to add insurance about 10 minutes later. And UConn looking good in fits and starts. They're getting a few passes together, but just could not keep possession for any length of time. That insurance goal from Stephanie Sanders, and again, what a month she has really had. She'll now push forward without the ball. UCF's back line all the way across midfield. Looking to link up with Sanders at the top of the 18, unable to connect that time. And no real reason for that ball. You're being very successful playing the ball to feet, playing the easy ball. No reason to send a 30-yard ball over the top, easily headed away by the Huskies. Lincoln Rose, Kit McConico, Bill Spaulding with you here on the American Digital Network. Thrilled to once again have coverage of American women's soccer for you. Again, the regular season champion, once again, will be the host of the conference tournament and all the advantages that come with that in November. As that ball will slip across the line and goal kick coming up and allow for a substitution. Nicely done there by Scott battling. Did everything she could to keep the ball in play. UConn's going to bring on Alexa Casimiro, the junior from Connecticut. And Casimiro taking the place of Kuzis. Kuzis, a sophomore from the Empire State, comes off. So 65% choose the former U.S. national team player and the career defender as the top goal scorer. We'll, we'll mention uh, Rodriguez, uh, a brilliant scoring career for UConn. In fact, her twin sister often would assist her on a lot of those goals. As Jennifer now head coach, or pardon me, assistant coach at Central Connecticut State. The Blue Devils, they also went to high school where they were the Blue Devils. I asked Coach Rodriguez if the only way her sister would join her is if UConn would change their soccer program to the Blue Devils. <laughs> She says the ultimate dream is for the two twins to coach side by side at some point. But right now, she's looking for her defense to just hold UCF to these two goals. As this strike of beauty from 18. Three nothing Knights. And it's the Germans today. This time the sophomore from Berlin, Dina Orschmann. Beautiful strike from Orschmann, but 
give credit to the buildup. Two great passes. The ball was here on the near sideline. One ball put it into the middle. The second sent it out wide. And that is all it took. Two perfect passes, both to feed Orschman with a beautiful strike. And it's 3-0 Knights. She too played in that U-20 Women's World Cup in France for Germany. Looking for more, make it four. Well, the Germans are having a day here in Storrs, Connecticut. As Stephanie Sanders has a brace. Sanders, you've already seen what she can do with the left foot. Had a beautiful strike for the second goal of the match and now a brace as she makes it 4 nothing. It's still not her best half of soccer this year. She had a hat trick in 45 minutes in non-conference play against Stetson. There's still 20 plus minutes remaining in this half. We'll see if she can match that feat. Huskies need a break to go their way. As Casimiro fresh off the bench, putting those fresh legs to use, but ultimately concedes it back over to UCF. But Plummer now will return the favor. Chipped in. Varis on her line and a foul called on the Huskies. Yeah, poor giveaway right there. Huskies with an opportunity. It found itself with Santos, the senior forward. Santos, the knee up going into the defender. Good call there from our referee. And Santos these days playing on the front line. Now that they believe they had shored up the defense. Now, of course, there have since been some more injuries on the back line, but they realize they need her scoring presence. Two it's goals last weekend. A yeah, very difficult decision. You have a player of Santos's caliber can play defensively as she had to out of necessity to start this season. When she's up front, she certainly has the ability to score goals. What do you do when you don't have the numbers at the back that you would like? Do you elect to play her back there? Do you try to keep her up front where she can find some goals if she gets the ball? But she really hasn't seen much of the ball in this match. A lot of family members of these players chiming in in the comments. Great to have everybody tuned in. UCF's had some pretty good ones, both men and women's soccer from Finland. Including Puzla for the men's team last year, came up just short of a conference tournament championship. And if you're a Knights fan watching from Germany, you've got to be pretty pleased with this first half. Might even be a reasonable time over there. <laughs> As opposed to anybody back in Hawaii. Again, a keeper change already made today by UConn, but I don't know if you necessarily pin this on either one. UCF has had some space to work with and some great strokes. Uh, the defending has been lacking. You'd like to see the midfield try to get more involved as well, try to win some balls in that center third, take pressure off that back line. UCF has been dominant from the very beginning. They've had possession, but it's been possession with a purpose. They haven't just possessed the ball. They have done things with it, as the scoreline indicates. Maura Amon getting a shout out in the comments. They say among the more underappreciated. Well, what I think a lot of people don't appreciate is how talented she is as a musician. Told she's very good with the guitar. Likes to spend her downtime in the recording studio. Knights already with four goals. That time denied point blank. Uh, they are not content. Would love to up that goal differential in the conference standings. Also important, that goal differential, trying to add as many as you can in that plus category. And good defending initially from UConn. They got the block of the shot, but then they were unable to win it back. They couldn't clear it out of danger. You have to get that ball out of your defensive third. And a breather for Elise Legru, freshman out of France. A U23 national team member. Four first half goals for UCF. And my history book does not go back far enough to figure out the last time they conceded as many as four goals. That would, of course, be the task for UConn to salvage a point today. Again, UConn, uh, pardon me, UCF only conceded two goals against conference foes last year, a 1-1 draw against USF, and you'll forgive the other match against Tulsa when they prevailed 6-1. 
Well, this defense for the Knights, you can be assured they want to keep the clean sheet. It's four to nothing, but they will not. They will do everything they can not to concede a goal. That's the point of pride for defenses. Your offense is doing their job. You want to do yours as well, and so far they certainly have. UCF's record overall a little deceptive. They opened the season in Chapel Hill against top 25 foes, Texas and North Carolina, the hosts. Of course, that was a homecoming of sorts for Sahedak, who said there were a lot of former Tar Heels on campus, including Angela Kelly, the head coach at Texas. But they started off 0-2, including that overtime loss to the Longhorns. But this is a Knights with a challenging non-conference schedule that has been tested against some of the best. Those Longhorns are still unbeaten this year. As UConn, a little friendly tap back to your current keeper, Palacios. UCF, 15 goals in eight matches coming into this one. Seven of those coming in the first half. Yeah, they've actually been a stronger team in the second half statistically, both offensively and defensively. They've only conceded three second half goals all season long as opposed to five in the first 45 minutes. Orschmann with a goal today, was looking for an assist. And this one chipped over the top from Lawrence off the mark. You like to see Lawrence go ahead and take a shot. That ball spills out to her perfectly. Go ahead and try to put that one on frame. It's difficult to get that chip over and down to find your teammate in such a tight area. So he stacked the New Jersey native, makes her 12th appearance on the year, the sophomore. And again, Coach Rodriguez, she's excited about this sophomore class as they continue to grow and eventually become the veterans of this program. And they're taking their lumps. This is a young team, and that's part and parcel to having a young team. They are getting better. They're improving. Very nicely done. Plummer able to get to it, sends it out into touch for the throw as opposed to conceding the corner. UConn will have a toss here. That means Varavaris back on her line for more. Let's check with Bill. Yeah, Lincoln, I know you mentioned she hasn't had to touch the ball that much today, but that doesn't mean she hasn't been involved. I've been standing by that end and listening to Vera Vars almost work as an extra coach. She's the eyes and ears of her entire team. Make sure she keeps them in formation. That's just another thing that's a strength of this senior keeper. She's a real leader back there. Yeah, Bill, that's a great point. Again, no matter what the score, even if the entire match is being played on the opposite half of the pitch, you'll see a keeper come well off her line, continue to keep that back line organized, as Bill put it, another coach. 1v1, and just the right gamble made by Palacios, dives to her left, and able to put it into that threat, as charging right at her, Kristen Scott. Beautiful save from Palacios, takes it off the shoelaces of Scott, and Scott, Looking to go around the goalkeeper, you'd like to see her just take that touch a bit quicker and pull the trigger. All credit to Palacios and the goal-saving save. A foul will send it back with UCF. I know Tiffany Roberts of Haydack, we talked about Vera Varis and kind of her origin story with this program. And, well, you're talking about a Knights team. They were already in good hands literally with Connie Oregon, who had a year left of eligibility, but she got her degree in December had a career opportunity ahead of her. And so all of a sudden, instead of having one of the top goalkeepers in your region returning for a senior year, they're left with a question mark they didn't expect to have. Well, Vera Varis was available over in Finland. They happened to come across her at an event when they were abroad. She plugs right in, and the rest is history with uh, her career here with the Knights. Uh, such a well-rounded goalkeeper, so good with her feet. She'll like to play it out of the back. It's very comfortable under pressure. It can really do it all. UCF, you cannot accuse them of parking the bus here at the 4-0 lead. No, they're continuing to press, looking for more, trying to extend that goal differential in conference. That's a defender pushed all the way up to midfield. Plummer trying to win that ball. For UConn on the ball right now, Isabel Lynch. Freshman from New York will send one into the 18, but nobody to play with. And now a giveaway. Able to keep the sheet clean, but just momentarily, the Huskies are on the board. And, well, no surprise, it's Elena Santos. Santos on the spot, jumps on it. A poor giveaway in the box. The initial shot blocked. Morris there, able to get a touch to it. A very nice save, but Santos with the rebound puts UConn on the board. That is three goals in four conference matches for Elena. 
That coincides with the four matches that she has played up front. And that is a huge goal, momentum-wise, confidence building for UConn, trailing four to nothing. Still 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Can they pull another one back and maybe cut this to a two-goal game going into the break? Yeah, just taking that zero off the scoreboard, an accomplishment. Let's see if they can build on it. UCF trying to pull that goal right back. And UCF just a bit too casual with the ball at the back. Both teams, every ball hotly contested. This is a very entertaining match. It's up-tempo, box-to-box, good action. And a lot of goals in just 33 minutes. Huskies trying to contribute a few more for their column. Moments ago, Santos with the rebound in the finish. You've already seen what a difference that goal makes. All the white jerseys pushed further up the pitch. Casimiro applying some pressure. Now a spring in the step of those UConn players. So Huskies back in the offensive third. UCF will make a substitution at the next opportunity. They'll have Kak, another one of their freshmen from France. Plummer, such an impo imposing force on that back line. Good size at five foot eight, the junior from Jamaica. Good in the air. I mentioned she's with the full national team with Jamaica. And here is the junior. UCF, even though they have a three-goal lead, not nearly as crisp and clean as they were early in this match. They're allowing Utah, UConn to have more possession. Huskies see more of the ball. What can they make of it? Thrilled to have you with us today here on the American Digital Network, live from Stores, Connecticut. Huskies and Knights with their lone regular season scheduled meeting. Of course, they could always collide again in the conference tournament. But the American always so entertaining, both women's and men's soccer here at the Division I level. Uh, some of the best soccer in the entire country as Plummer comes off, gets a well-deserved break. Yeah, UConn already seeing some of the best of the best in this conference over these first two weekends, the way the schedule plays out. We will see a lot of substitutions from both these teams. They are going to send players out there for short stretches, let them run hard, get them a break. UConn with 18 seen action in that conference opener against USF. Ball sent in and fielded on the fly right at her toes by Palacios. Your typical starter this year comes off the bench here today. And Kerrigan got the start in the match, her second consecutive. She made the start against USF in that four to nothing loss. Gave up some quick goals and Palacios was on to replace her. Well, it's such a tough start today. The fifth minute and own goal from your back line makes it one nothing. Now UCF has since found three German goals. And those are your difference right now. Stephanie Sanders with six goals now on the year, two today. Orschmann with her family tuning in has added a goal as well. Yeah, that own goal is heartbreaking if you're a Huskies fan. And credit the Knights, they were up one to nothing and they really started pouring it on. Up the middle. Another counter attack opportunity here. That back line retreating for the Huskies, trying to provide support for Palacios. From the wing, no easy access. Still knocking on that door. As landing on this one will be Samantha Chung. 
what lineage she has. Of course, her dad, Mark, played for the U.S. men's national team as well as in Major League Soccer. And almost another giveaway there for the Huskies. Just a bit disconnected in the back between the goalkeeper and that back line for UConn. That's something they're going to have to figure out quickly. Carrie Lawrence with the throw. Senior hoping to wrap up her career tonight as a back-to-back -back champion in the American and return to the NCAA tournament. Last year, UCF knocked off by Washington State in Orlando in the first round. They were hoping for a deeper run. And again, Cack, the French substitution on that back line in her first year of college soccer. Yeah, difficult schedule this year for UCF. They'll face five teams that were in the NCAA tournament a year ago. Lawrence has been outstanding. Kerry Lawrence has been absolutely fantastic down this near sideline offensively and defensively, playing as the connector. Mernon will send it into that Husky back line. UCF respects the fact that UConn can strike and can find more goals. And that probably lends itself to the reason why UCF is still aggressive here with five minutes to go in the first half, up 4-1. to one. Chung just trying to create some chaos. The Huskies stay organized, but will give it away to Lawrence. Looking for space. Shot fired right on frame and ultimately squeezed in by Palacios. Let's check back in with Bill Spaulding. Lincoln, we are loving the fan interaction on Facebook. We got a little bit more of an ask for you out there. There are 14 international players in this game. We want to know which team has more. We're going to test your knowledge again. I know you have the Google machine, but no cheating here. Which team has more international players, UCF or UConn? That's your test over these next few minutes, and Lincoln will give you the answer. Thank you very much, Bill. Yeah, international players, such a big part of the college game now. Obviously, is already significant at the professional level. Well, for these young men and women internationally, it's a great opportunity to come to the States, get a first-class education, and play soccer at the highest levels. A win-win. Another chance and the second goal of the day on the board for UConn, deja vu. It's a brace for Santos. Miscommunication at the back. Santos makes the Knights pay. And all of a sudden, it's a two-goal game. Still four and a half remaining in the first half. But what a job from the young lady who started this season in defense out of necessity. And adds two more to her tally. I have a feeling you'll see number 20 written in the lineup for the rest of the season right there at the top and you can use ink to write her in. She's not going anywhere that is for sure. She will not be returning to that back line with her goal scoring prowess. And UCF quite frankly they just took their foot off the gas. They had a four to nothing lead conceded one and for UConn to be able to come back with two goals in succession they cut it to a two goal game. This one is far from over. So right now, Orschmann's goal for UCF would be your potential game winner as the own goal and the first goal from Sanders have been answered. And what a turn of events. I mean, we take the starting pitcher off the hook for the loss. <laughs> Palacios has done her job. Give her a lot of credit. It's always difficult to come into a match, especially when you're down big as she was. But it's done exactly what she's been asked to do. 
And it appears that UConn a bit more confident with Palacios back in goal. They're playing freer. They're seeing more of the ball, having the longer possessions, and putting more pressure on UCF, winning the ball back quicker than they were. Jada Scott, one of the many Florida natives. Of course, Bill has asked if the folks tuning in know which of these teams is able to set aside more roster spots for international players as they have this year. Again, here's a UCF team that's put up four goals. Almost 50% of its roster, 11 newcomers. Different names than a year ago in the team that dominated and took the title. Of course, UConn with its fair share of newcomers as well. All of a sudden, it seems there's a lot more white shirts out there. They're moving a lot quicker. They're getting to those 50-50 balls. Are the Huskies looking more dangerous? And defensively, just moving quicker, bringing the help quicker. If someone gets beat, that second defender making their way over. Another corner kick here for UCF. Lawrence will do the honors. Former South Carolina Gamecock, wrapping up her career with the Knights. After growing up nearby in Orlando, went to Timber Creek High School. Good ball in, played hard to that near post, headed away. Putting pressure on that Huskies defense. Emily Tipton will have the throw here. I asked, who's your most improved player of Coach Zahedak? And she did not hesitate. Look. Emily Tipton's always been a quality player, but she was stuck behind a three to four year starter. And you just never know when she gets her moment if she'll fully take advantage. Not only did she take advantage, she was a belated captain. Last captain name for this team. She stepped up in so many different ways, a real leader for this side. And UConn back line, no mistake there. Good ball in, dangerous ball. Already six goals scored in this one. Still time remaining in the first half. Can't even imagine what the second staff, second half has in store. Yeah, just imagine anybody who got their time zones mixed up and just now tuning in. Hopefully there's a rewind button. Still an entire 45 yet to be played. They will reset with Varus. You see UConn pressuring, getting those white shirts up, trying to win it back. And you know, those passes through the middle of the defense make you nervous. They've already gotten a goal off a defensive mistake from the Knights. Quickly, one, one keeper to the other. Well, it started 4-0 UCF. But the Huskies had made this far more interesting than the women from Orlando had hoped. As we are in the final minute here of the opening half. And the question is now, who will have the momentum going into the second half? UConn, who scored the last two, or UCF with that two-goal advantage. Final seconds counting down. Stephanie Sanders with a first half brace for UCF. Her Knights lead the Huskies. But for UConn, Santos with two goals, a brace of her own, and they will still need more. Well, before we step aside, let's check in with Bill. He's with Coach Tiffany Sahedek. Coach, uh, good start. Four goals, obviously, in rapid fire. What do you think of the overall for the 45? Um, we started off strong, like you said. Uh, that was good, but we hate conceding goals. So we'll definitely talk about just taking care of the details in the box, and hopefully we get a few more on attack. You told us all week about the talent of Stephanie Sanders. Scores a couple here early. Uh, how did she showcase what she can do for you guys? Oh, she was great. She was great on the ball, off the ball, defensive both sides of the ball, so um, I'm proud of her performance so far. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Lincoln, back to you guys. Bill, thank you very much. 
The Germans providing three goals, including a brace from Sanders. She's already got one hat trick this year. Could number 11 find a third goal in the second half? Knights go to halftime on the road in Storrs, Connecticut, up 4-2 here on the American Digital Network. I got it. <laughs> In just five seasons, storied programs have united as a Power Six conference. We've watched record breakers, All-Americans, and victories that proved we are not only equal to the best, but often better. Can you imagine what's ahead for this Power Six conference? We can, because the best way to predict the future is to create the future. The American, powered by determination. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle, a big save, a clutch hit, or a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. There is power in the sportsmanship that is displayed across the American. Power is respecting opponents, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power for life. The American. Power for life. The American. Power for life. People say we're big. Wow. Well, what is big? This is big. It's an energy. An opportunity. So go on. Dream big. Because big is just the beginning. I got it. <laughs> this is big. More than 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 22 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American, powered by determination. Strong in mind, strong in body, strong in school, sport, life. The grind is 10% physical and 90% mental. The mind is the power. The body is a means to jump higher, run faster, be smarter, and live longer. There is no weakness when it comes to seeking help. We are stronger together. So let's talk about it. A waterfall starts with one drop. Change starts with one person. The American is dedicated to ending the stigma related to mental health. And promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. Promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is our backyard. This is home. This is Yukon. 6 goals in the opening 45 minutes of play in stores Connecticut. The Knights score the first four, including an own goal that got the account started. Lincoln Rose, Kit McConico. No goals between us, but an entertaining first 45 as it all plays out. Thanks in part to Santos with her brace in that first half, making things interesting, cutting the deficit in half. Entertaining to say the very least. UCF came out of the gate hot. The own goal just five minutes in. Then they added three more to it. It looked like it was going to be all nights nice. and give UConn a ton of credit. They came back Santos with two goals. She's cut it to a two goal game. I have a feeling we're going to see a few more in the second half. 
Well, Bill asked earlier about international players. We'll have the answer to that trivia a little bit later on in the broadcast. But again, the Germans for UCF already all three of their offensive goals that we have seen so far. Bill's had some good stuff today. In fact, Bill, let's check back in with you down on the pitch. All right, thank you very much, Lincoln. And easy to find good stuff when you're talking about a storied program like this UConn women's soccer team. Mention it's Margaret Rodriguez's first year. She's taking over for a legend. Uh, Len Santiris, the former coach here for 37 years, the second winningest coach. On the wall, here are some highlights from all of his great seasons. Look at all these NCAA finalist trips, starting all the way back in 1984. That 84 team was a 17-4-2 squad. Only six years later, they were in the NCAA finals again. Follow that up seven years later, 23-4 uh, and four season, capping off an NCAA finalist season. That was in 1997. You can kind of sense a pattern here. It was every six or seven years because we get to 2003, and you see again NCAA finalists 15, 6, and 3. Uh, more than 500 wins for Coach Santiris, the second winningest coach in women's college soccer history. Guys, I know one thing that I notice here on top of just how consistent UConn's been, you really notice how the fashion changes, how the hairstyles change, and everything over the course of this long run for UConn. Just look and see uh, how this team has been good for so long and that's what Margaret Rodriguez's job with this young team is, to get them up to snuff so that when they're all juniors and seniors, they're at this level as well. Yeah, and Bill, of course, Margaret Rodriguez is in that 1997 squad that finished your national runner-up with UConn. She is trying to continue that enthusiasm and level of success with her home program, the Huskies. So again, we step aside here, halftime, six goals in that first half, a 4-2 lead for UCF and coach Tiffany Roberts, the Haydack, but it's the Huskies who have had the most two recent scoring strikes, taking momentum into the half. I got it. <laughs> Just five seasons, storied programs have united as a Power Six Congress. We've watched record breakers, all Americans, and victories that proved we are not only equal to the best, but often better. Can you imagine what's ahead for this Power Six Conference? We can, because the best way to predict the future is to create the future. The American, powered by determination. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle, a big save, a clutch hit, or a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. There is power in the sportsmanship that is displayed across the American. Power is respecting opponents, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power for life. The American. Power for life. The American, power for life. People say we're big. Well, what is big? This is big. It's an energy. An opportunity. So go on. Dream big, because big is just the beginning. I got it. <laughs> this is big. More than 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 22 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American, powered by determination. Strong in mind, strong in body, strong in school, sport, life. The grind is 10% physical and 90% mental. The mind is the power. The body is a means to jump higher, run faster, be smarter, and live longer. There is no weakness when it comes to seeking help. 
we are stronger together. So let's talk about it. A waterfall starts with one drop. Change starts with one person. The American is dedicated to ending the stigma related to mental health. And promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. Promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is our backyard. This is home. This is Yukon. UCF hanging on to an advantage on the road today here at halftime after their victory at Temple, looking to get a road sweep for heading back to Orlando, but it will be a tough task to hang on. Kenny got started with an own goal conceded by UConn. At just five minutes in, a tough way to start for the Huskies. UCF quickly doubled their lead to the goal from Sanders. That would be the first goal for Sanders. Another sophomore from Germany, Orschmann, able to chime in. And here's Sanders completing the brace. It was 4 0 at this point. Well, the groundhog. I don't know if he saw a shadow, he retreated. But that indicated two more goals for the Huskies. What a job from Santos and the Huskies not giving up down four to nothing, but Santos with a pair of goals cuts it to a two goal deficit as we get ready to start the second half. And some renewed enthusiasm for the Huskies. Well, we asked you about the goal scored in career. You're talking to one of the greatest goal scorers in UConn history. Margaret Rodriguez scored 43 in her career, and she is now the head coach of the Huskies. She's also now with Bill. We're with Margaret Rodriguez, coach, obviously not the start you were looking for, but what did you think about the way your team responded with those two late goals? I mean, the two late goals are great. Unfortunately, you know, we put ourselves in a hole and we gave up soft goals. I told you that's been our Achilles. But our team knows how to respond. We're, we're learning how to fight. We're putting ourselves in a hole, but we're going to climb our way through this. And we're not giving up. On such a young team, how important is it to have seniors coming through the way Elena did there with those two goals? Seniors, it, it's huge for us. I mean, that's what we're looking for. We're lacking a little leadership. I need someone on the field who's going to just be fed up with it and say, we're getting the job done. We have the ability to do it. We just we just need that confidence. So we're fighting for that confidence right now. All right, Coach, thanks. Good luck in the second half. Thank you very much. Back to you guys. Again, what a player she was at the college level, the professional level, and now for the past 10 years has been the top assistant for UConn, and of course this offseason promoted the head coach, her senior Santos, with the two goals in response. And again, soft goals, that's been the theme. That's how she summed up last weekend when they went 0-2 to start conference. Oh, that's exactly right, unfortunately. And if you're giving up an own goal five minutes in, that is indeed a soft goal. The team, the caliber of UCF, you cannot give up goals. You cannot give up soft goals. Certainly not give them a four to nothing advantage. Credit to UConn, credit to their senior Santos with those two goals. But as you heard Coach Rodriguez say, she needs help. It cannot just be Elena Santos. She can't get UConn back into this game all by herself. Well, Santos, an American, but a lot of international players for these two teams in this match. A combined 14 international players in this matchup. And, of course, the question that Bill posed earlier was which team boasts more. And it is UCF, nine international players to five for UConn. Uh, but you see a lot of those names have already made an impact today, including Orschmann and Sanders combining for the three goals. Yeah. Or the Knights. Two Germans with goals, two for Sanders, one for Orschmann. You see the four in the Huskies there. The countries represented England, Germany, Switzerland, and Sweden. So certainly an international flavor to this one. Surprised to see a soccer player coming out of Liverpool. They've been known to play a bit of soccer there from what I hear. So again, coach kept it all in perspective as happy as you had to be with those two goals late disappointed that they were down 4-0 early to have to overcome an answer with those late two goals and of course coach Sahedak sees room for improvement on that back line as well could not maintain the clean sheet but wants to make sure that they don't see a third goal cross their line but for UCF, you're leading four to nothing. Took their foot off the gas a bit. Certainly to be expected with a 4-0 lead. But those two goals scored by UConn, they were mistakes defensively for the Knights. That, that's what allowed the Huskies to get back into this one. 
She had 24 goals in her North Carolina Tar Heel career. Not bad for a defensive-minded player. When you consider those Tar Heel squads she played for, some of the best in history. Can I tell you, I've noticed a theme with former Tar Heels who are coaches at other programs. Their goalkeepers, among the colors in their repertoire, tends to be what resembles the Carolina blue. Oh, it's a good look, and certainly you have to find that off color, so it works for this match without a doubt. So a brand new 45 minutes of play as they see your regular starter this year, 11 starts back in goal for UConn, but she came in after an early 2-0 deficit, Randy Palacios. Palacios did a very good job, came in, her side already trailing, a difficult position to be put in, did what she needed to do. She's gonna have to stand strong in the second half as no doubt she will face some more shots on goal from the Knights. There is Varis, gave up the two late goals into the first half, the reigning conference goalkeeper of the year. Conceded just one goal in conference play all of last season. Underway for the second 45 in Storrs, Connecticut. See if UConn can come out on the front foot, put pressure on UCF. Maybe find a goal and make it a one-goal game. Again, thrilled to have you with us today, live on the American Digital Network. I was excited when the conference unveiled the Olympic sports, women's soccer, men's soccer, and volleyball lineup that we will have for you this fall. That includes the American Championship for the women. Site, of course, TBD. It'll go to the number one seed Last year, of course, we were over in the Sunshine State. Championship will be with ESPNU. Early rounds right here for free on the American Digital Network. So the Huskies down by a pair. And as big as those first two goals were, if they could find the first goal of this second half, just about a brand new ball game. Oh, it would be absolutely massive. They would be right back in it and cut this to a one goal deficit. That would be something. They've come back trailing four to nothing. Looking for space, but again, well spaced by the Huskies. And as good as UCF was early in that first half, they were certainly aided by UConn and UConn has picked things up defensively the midfield getting involved in the action as well well we'll take our crew to florida but not orlando we'll be in tampa as the bearcats and the bulls collide on thursday and then we'll get our first dose of men's action when the bulls travel to dallas to take on smu there should be some great matches on the horizon of course last year in volleyball wichita state its first year as a member of the conference went undefeated for the volleyball regular season title as Temple and SMU had to settle for tying for second, it'll be the Bearcats that make the trek into the, what was that, the Sunflower State? <laughs> and it's back underway. Ball out on the wing with the Knights. And a corner kick here early in the second half for UCF. Lincoln Rose, Kit McConaughey, Bill Spaulding with you today with our ADN crew. All the goals in the first half came through the run of play, none from set pieces. Sandy Saray played about 86 of the 90 minutes, the junior out of Western Florida in their last outing. And they did call a whistle before the hand was extended in the box. And some contact there just above the six yard box. Beautiful service from Saray, just putting that one right where she wanted it. Ray with a goal and an assist this year. And the toss coming up for UConn, it's Palmetto. Freshman from New York with her seventh showing this season. Injuries have created some additional opportunities for some of the reserves for the Huskies. No excuses though being made by the program. 
Uh, just a missed touch there, allowing that one to go out for a Huskies throw. It looks like the Knights may have had something building. Nicely done by Lawrence, able to win it back. Keep it in play. We'll be able to punt this one away if she chooses or try to find the 7-10 split. This time uses the boot. I mentioned Carrie Lawrence, what a first half she had. Not in the scorebook, but very influential for UCF. You love to see it when a school has both women and men finding a great deal of success. UConn has seen some tremendous soccer over the years from both of its programs. And of course, more recently, UCF has been the same story. Yeah, they've had fantastic teams historically in stores for the men and women. And UCF, what a job they've done in recent years. They've become a powerhouse, in both men's and women's soccer. UCF went to Dallas last year for the men's tournament. Where the Knights pushed the SMU Mustangs to overtime before conceding a golden goal. Yeah, they give SMU all they could handle. SMU traditionally one of the top programs in the country. This one from a little past 20. Appropriately from 20 as Madison Mernon just off the mark. And it appeared Palacios had he covered. She was shaded to the near post. Looked like had that one been on frame would have been able to come up with a save. Ball just finding itself at the boots of Mernon. Mernon battling back from a sprained ankle, reinserted now in the midfield. Was able to work in 41 minutes in their last match. Sophomore from Jacksonville. UConn much better organized defensively here in the second than they were early in the first. All six goals came in the first half. We're now six minutes into the second half. We already saw the first goal at this point. At the start of the match, it was an own goal. Imagine if you eliminate that. And right now we're just talking about a 3-2 ball game. This is your headliner for the Huskies, Santos, her first multi-goal match. Great ball from Santos down the line. Plays it out wide. And this ball, not sure if it was deflected wide or not. It'll simply be a goal kick. Did not need to put a hand on it, Varis, but she gets tested here as the ball sent in by Danico Kolchitsky. Great work from UConn all the way around. Santos played it back, a little one-two. Kolchitsky sending that one dangerously into the six-yard box. Three, get three goals this year for Kolchitsky. If you're a UConn fan, that's promising build up there from the Huskies. Quickly the other way with Orschmann. Preseason all-conference, she's lived up to that billing. Her first goal of the year earlier today. UConn doing a much better job bringing multiple defenders when Stevens and Orschmann find themselves with it. They've already seen them score goals. Good look at Emily Tipton. We talked about her story as late in the process was named a starter after she lived up to and exceeded every expectation you could have of a young lady who had just been waiting in the wings for the past few years. A fantastic career from the senior left back. Sanders with just a poor touch there. Came off the side of the boot. Over to the far post and ultimately no mistake made. With a little bit of help, ultimately just able to snatch that ball up. This is done from Palacios, getting that one quickly out, trying to find a white jersey up the pitch. And the ball will stay on this end. Again, UCF, we talked about how they had to reinvent half of their roster just about from last year's championship squad and yet still maintain high expectations. Had some inconsistency in the non-conference. I would argue part of that is the difficulty of the scheduling, especially that opening weekend in Chapel Hill. 
So you work in some new faces. They were without the talented Germans who have accounted for three goals today because of that U-20 Women's World Cup over in France. And of course, you were without your Jamaican on the back line because of her experience with the national team. And nice aggressive decision by Palacios to come out. She could not afford to hesitate. Palacios has been fantastic coming off her line all match long. Was able to take one off the boot of a knight in the first half. Does so again here early in the second. That's a decision that has to be instantaneous. Uh, Santos a little heavy with the last touch. Still able to stay on top of it. Back to the senior. They mentioned all the new faces for UCF. They lost nine players, most of them starters, a lot of leaders. Santos will win them a corner kick here. Can they convert on this set piece? Big opportunity here for the Huskies. The sophomore will put her right foot into it. Again, another low one. This time from UConn. Poorly taken corner kick. No one in white in the vicinity, and now UCF bringing numbers up the other way. And Huskies will buy time for the rest of the white kits to get back. Great tackle. Just took it off the boots of Stevens. It looked like she was going to be heading into goal. Tackle came from behind. Very difficult. You've got to get the ball. You cannot concede the foul. That time, Sanders just had it taken away. You think she has a few eyes on her today? Two goals in the first half, and both very impressive. UCF trying to work into that offensive third. Well, perhaps a counter opportunity in response. Uh, there you have the discipline of Kanya Plummer. She's already played at the highest level for her country. You said it. That was a very disciplined work from Plummer. Didn't dive in, didn't make a stabbing tackle, just waited for the right moment before she took it away. It is a sport unlike any other. When you talk about youth, it is rarely an excuse because we see teenagers competing on such grand stages. And by the time they reach college, uh, the intimidation factor is often just not going to be there. That's exactly what Coach Sahedek had to say about recruiting international players. A lot of Americans just haven't played at this level. The internationals have. This one from 19. It's a one goal match in stores. Here come the Huskies with three straight. This time, Kolchitsky finds the back of the net, her fourth on the year. What a turn of events. The sophomore from Chappaqua, New York, turns. Drills it with the right boot into the side netting. Perfectly struck. UConn, after going down four to nothing, has scored the last three in a row, and all of a sudden it's a one-goal game. Right now, that own goal holding up as a difference maker. That came in the fifth minute of this match. UCF would have a four-nothing lead, and now all of a sudden. The Huskies have scored more goals today against UCF than the Knights conceded against all American foes last year combined. My question going into the second half was who would have the momentum? Well, there's no question now. It is firmly on the side of the hosts. What a development this could prove to be with over a half hour still to play. Trying to take over again. That is your defender, Plummer. Good shoulder to shoulder tackle there. Won the ball cleanly. Sophia Danico Kolchitsky. Four goals now on the year. As the sophomore pairs her goal with the brace already from Santos. Coach Rodriguez mentioned at halftime. Pleased with the young players, how they responded after going down early. What a job from UConn. This is the kind of game that you could really build upon. This is a game that if you figure out a way to come back and win this one or draw this match, you can use that for the rest of your season. Well, I was going to 
point out there, you beat me to it. How often do we see a moment like this if UConn bounces back all of a sudden, not only success throughout the rest of this year, but for years to come, you can look back to this match. That's exactly right. And for this talented sophomore class, Coach Rodriguez will tell them in their junior and senior campaigns, you remember the game against UCF at home when you were down 4 nothing and you came back? That's a game none of the players will ever forget. Now, of course, the comeback not yet complete. Still a fourth goal for them to answer, but they have scored the last three. Right now, starting to see a sense of urgency from UCF. They were calm, cool, and collected even early in the second half, but right now, having seen their lead shrink to just one. Could this be the opportunity for the Huskies to level us in stores? Stopped with the kick save. And everyone just holding their breath for a moment there, but Varus secures it. What a save from the reigning conference goalkeeper of the year. Absolutely outstanding. That is why Varus is as good as she is. Able to get her leg out, just enough of it, and then able to clean it up. A couple chances there, you thought, perhaps, for the Huskies to send that one across the finish line. Huskies looking dangerous, applying more and more pressure on the goal of Varis. Let's check back in with Bill Spaulding. Guys, thank you. The, the energy here is spectacular now. And hey, the energy in our Facebook chat has been really good as well. You didn't think we'd give you the whole second half off, right? We've got another trivia question for you. And the question is, how many championships have these two programs combined for in American women's soccer? They've only played in one American women's soccer championship, but how many wins do they have combined? Lincoln will give you the answer a little bit later on. Yeah, they have just faced off on one occasion in a championship, but uh, a couple of well-decorated programs this decade. UCF has conceded three straight goals. Two to close out the first half. One more here in the second half. And a very speculative attempt there from Sanders from distance. Saw Palacios off her line momentarily, but you have possession. You're getting numbers forward. You might as well keep possession and get a better shot. It's one of those shots, if it goes in, it's spectacular. If not, a very easy save, as was the case. I mentioned these two teams have only met once in the conference tournament. It was in the semifinals of 2014. But the question before you that Bill has asked is how many combined titles these two teams have. From 18, looking for that top right 90, but it will sail wide, and that one goal lead still intact. As we check back within with Bill after this second look. Bill? Lincoln, uh, one thing I heard before the game from Coach Rodriguez was she was really proud of her team, even when they were down 4 nothing against USF on Thursday, that the energy was strong. She had a team that she said really fights. The sideline, the players were cheering two minutes left down four goals. I noticed that again today when they fell behind 4 nothing. None of her players went down and sat on the bench. Nobody seemed to drop their shoulders, sag their head, anything like that. And I think we're seeing what that attitude and that effort from this UConn team can do. They've been able to whittle their way back into this game and get better guess that they are all engaged at this point on the sideline. There's some great energy on the UConn bench. Absolutely, with good reason. It's a UCF defense that had only conceded eight goals in regulation all year. And already three goals conceded to the Huskies who are still looking for their first points in the American. Beautiful ball. Oh, mishap on the back line, but no mistake by your keeper. Six yards up. Vera Varis again will land on it. And that's an easy save for Varis. You have to do better in that situation. Does a great job getting around that final defender, but the shot lacking, not testing Varis. Mora Amen at some point may need the tire rotation. Lost the grip there on the pitch, but her keeper able to take care of things. For UConn, they had lost their previous two matches. They were outscored 8-1 to one in those losses to SMU and USF. 
What a job they've done in this one. Going down early, battling back. I know we've said it, but it bears repeating. And just one and four here at home. This is Emily Tipton, your left back. One of the seniors. And Tipton, who replaced that three-year starter in the form of Saga Fredrickson, has done a great job in that spot. Good to see her getting back to her feet. Another look here. As those knees collide. And you hope that's just something that's momentarily going to phase her. I hope she'll be able to continue. For UCF, not a bad thing to be able to take a second to catch their breath. All the momentum was on the Husky side. Take a little air out of this game, so to speak. The freshman, Sydney Brown, is going to take her place for the moment. It's the nice thing about the college game, the liberal substitutions, especially in the second half. All of it because of player safety concerns. Reset after the foul. Kick will be handled by Amon. <laughs> Top of the 18. Great service in. Nicely cleared away by UConn. Again, UCF had the opening weekend of conference play open, so they just tried to utilize that to recover from some injuries and try to continue building some chemistry with some players that had been away from the program. As you see, a breather for Atlanta Moore. And Madison Vernon also will head back to the bench for the Knights. And both teams making changes, anticipating this one going all the way down to that 90th minute. It appeared that it was going to be an easy, easy match for UCF when they got up early, added to it. UConn storming back. Knights looking for their first goal in the second half. And what an adjustment. Slipping to the pitch. It is a hat trick on the day for the sophomore from Hamburg, Stephanie Sanders. The Werder Bremen product with a beautiful cutback here around the final defender. Loses her footing, but cuts it back. And I'm sure that is what she meant to do. Even though she lost her footing, she saw the space to the near post, went with precision over power, comes up with three goals for the Knights. It is her second hat trick this month, her first in conference play. And it gives the Knights a little bit of breathing room after conceding the last three goals to the home side Huskies. Now the emotional roller coaster continues for UConn, going down, coming back. We're within one goal, now all of a sudden it's back to a two goal game. Does UConn have enough in the tank? Do they have enough time? Sanders just making the most of her situation, falling to the pitch while trying to make a pivot. Still got enough behind that ball. Uh, just the sophomore, an absolutely incredible talent is Stephanie Sanders. Your classic center forward, your striker, five foot 11, great aerial prowess, good with the ball at her feet. Knights have led by as many as four. That lead was trimmed to one. Finally, some insurance back on the board from a familiar source. I can assure you the Knights are not going to take their foot off the gas pedal this time. They were up early. 
They took a breather. UConn got right back into it. It's their second five goal performance. Their other was back in Florida at Stetson. As that one tapped out, will spill loose out of the pause. A little moment of concern from Palacios, but no damage done. But who else but Sanders there with the shot from distance. Looked like it was going to go wide initially. Found itself on frame. Palacios forced to make a save. Huskies trying to pull it back from 18. And a opportunity miss from Kolchitsky. That is one. Actually played the assist that time. That is one that UConn has to put in the back of the net. Have to figure out a way to score in that situation. I believe that was Jerzak with the shot from 18. Native of Sweden there. She's had a few opportunities in this match. She's not been able to put him on frame. Ponto, just a freshman. Looking for her second goal this year. Kuzi is the sophomore in the starting lineup today. Returns now to the pitch. As Spillane will pick up a penny. All back and forth match. Wanted to get some rest for these players. We're putting them back out there. This was four to two at halftime. Usually a two goal second half is pretty exciting. There could still be some more fireworks here, including from this young lady. Santos already a brace today, her, the first of her career. Four goals in her four, last four matches now. But they still need more. Santos, well defended by Brown, couldn't find any room to get the cross in. Can the Knights make it a six goal trip to Connecticut? And Brown just a bit too much. Had Sanders there, other opportunities to make the pass. Santos comes off, no doubt she will get a quick break and then be back on. I'll insert her for a late push. Varis. Great outlet there from Varis. I don't think either of us pretend to know exactly how this match will conclude 20 minutes from now. But certainly some positives to be taken out of it from both sides and yet room for improvement. Meanwhile, one guy who never needs any room for improvement, Bill Spaulding. <laughs> Bill? Uh, Lincoln, Lincoln, you're just too kind. Uh, this year, Moroni Stadium has been one of the best soccer stadiums in the Northeast. So much history here over the last few decades. This is the final year of Moroni Stadium in its current form. It'll undergo, starting in November, a massive renovation phase. Uh, this stadium has had four sellouts in the last two years, and they said they're hoping to build a facility here that matches the history this UConn program has had. Even though it's going to look beautiful once it's renovated, there's some nostalgia to this field. So if you want to share in the nostalgia, hashtag Maroney memories. That's what they're doing here at UConn to remember all the great moments here over the past 30 years. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, that is going to be a, uh, well, you're going to click on that hashtag, find one memory. It's going to take you to another one, to another one. And you could be stuck there for hours just reliving some great moments. There have been some incredible moments for both UConn women and men on this field. I was going to call it a rabbit hole. Did not want to offend the groundhog in <laughs> attendance. 19 minutes to go here in regulation. Still plenty of time. 
for these two teams to put their stamp on this match. Huskies trying to pull back within one. And it will be another corner kick as Plummer got her boots on it. Defensively now will help organize the troops. Olszewski doing a very good job. Had two defenders draped all over, able to come away with the corner. Delivers with that right foot. And the Knights the first on it. Yeah, you mentioned the room for improvement. I think things that both these teams would like to see, a little better service in those corners. We've seen some poorly taken corners letting the opponents off the hook in those situations. Great sign there on the back line. We saw Emily Tipton after knocking knees earlier as she returns. And Carrie Lawrence will be the adjustment coming off. Really, for the first time in the entire match, started to find a bit of a lull. There was not one in the first half. Came out guns a blazing for both sides early here in the second. Both teams settling down. UCF obviously content with the two goal advantage. This is where UCF would love to be able to just complete some passes, take some time, work with possession. So they're also going to keep the Huskies on their heels. Sanders, not content with a hat trick, moves it into the offensive third. And UCF with that two-goal lead. They have the luxury of just knocking the ball around. Lauren Nemiroff out of Kentucky. Started her career as a Kentucky Wildcat before making the trek to Orlando. And a one hopper from about 26 yards out. Sanders the kind of player, she has never seen a shot she didn't like. As good as she is, you can understand why. Bad news for the rest of the conference. Sanders, two more years after this one. She and Orschman have combined for four goals for UCF. And we talk about the own goal that got it all started in favor of UCF. You can give them some credit. A great shot, uh, just a poor clearance. A bit unlucky there. UConn tried to head it away, took a deflection. The goalkeeper at the time, Kerrigan, was shaded to the far post, couldn't get back to it. And a distant memory. We've seen seven goals since then through the run of play. UCF still looking for more. Yeah, how about that? None of them off set pieces. All through the run of play. One thing both these coaches said they would like to see more goals from set pieces. I think they'll be content with the goals scored here this afternoon. <laughs> UCF has been dominating opponents in corner kicks this year, 52 to 28 coming into this match. They've scored three goals from the penalty spot. They're three of four when it comes to penalty kicks. Urban X centers this one at the top of the 18, and UCF does not give them an easy path. Danico Kolchitsky, as it slips away. A beautiful tackle there, going to ground in the box. Always dangerous. Able to knock it away cleanly. Vera probably misses the days that we didn't talk about. It. Business picked up a little bit. Two goals at the end of that first half. One here in the second. That made it four to three. Uh, but Sanders was not done with her account, found that third goal, completed the hat trick with UCF's lone goal this half and has helped cool off the attack for UConn. Still 15 minutes for a comeback. That one.
one took a deflection easily collected by Varys. UConn getting shots, they're having opportunities, and that's all you can ask for. They're going to have to do better. Again, Vera Varys already has her undergraduate degree. We talk about these international players, but how many of us were mature enough to go so far from home as teenagers? Embrace pretty different culture. I say that, of course, I realize who I'm sitting next to in the broadcast booth. Uh, Argentina is still uh, trying to clean up after your mess. <laughs> Uh, with these young players, they're, they're, they're so mature at a young age, what they're doing on and off the pitch. But it bears repeating that they have this international experience, and that's a large reason for the maturity. They played at the highest level. They've been away from home. They've played, they've represented their national team. And that shows not just on their on-field, but their off-field accomplishments as well. First chance to see the freshman from Point Vedra Beach, Florida. And Dotsikis. Huskies trying to pull back within one once again. Again, two decorated programs. Last most recent question that Bill asked you, how many combined championships in the American do these teams have? Those being tournament titles that come with the automatic bid of the NCAA tournament. And of course, there have been five champions crowned through the first five years. And with under 12 minutes remaining in the match, UConn is going to have to start committing numbers forward, trailing by two. They can concede another goal. Obviously, they don't want to, but right now they have to figure out a way to get goals. That's the most important thing. There you see the predictions. As most of you are in the ballpark, three combined titles, UCF won in 2000. Uh, 13, UConn with a pair as well. Yeah, the only time they've actually met, surprisingly, in the conference tournament, 2014, in the semifinals, UConn took that one. Let's move on to the final. The American no stranger to go into a shootout or at least overtime to determine its champion and automatic qualifier for the NCAA tournament. Great work there from Plummer. Didn't put a touch to it, let it go out for the goal kick. Let's check back in with Bill. Guys, everybody's been A-plus with their uh, Facebook interaction today, so good effort all around. Give yourself a hand. We're asking you one more thing. Vote for your MVP of the match today. I think we've got a couple really strong candidates from both sides. We want your MVP pick. We'll talk to the game MVP along with the winning head coach at the end of the game today. And, of course, yes, Bill will be talking to our winning coach and one of our key players. We've had several standouts. I think right now it's hard to vote against. When you tip your hat to. What a job with the hat trick for the German. Anta Jerzak back on. Had a quality shot earlier. She comes on for Leon. Sophia Leon, most improved Husky. Has had great talent, but more importantly, has shown consistency this year. Rodriguez says she's her own harshest critic. Talking about Leon. The great ones always are. They always want to know what they have to do to get better. Never satisfied Leon, one of those players. Well, 
it has been a rare day for Vera Varis as she has seen three balls cross her line today. At the moment, still on track for a victory on the road. And Santos was hoping again, perhaps for a hat trick of her own. Varis came into the game with a 1.13 goals against average, conceded just one goal in conference all of last season, but number that she knows, one that matters, that is scoreboard number, and right now, UCF on top. Final 10 minutes of play in stores. And for the Knights, still under the belief the best defense is offense. Seen a bit of disconnect there from the midfield. They are hanging back more defensively minded than they were early in this match for UCF. And a corner kick here for the visitors. They will take their time in this situation. All about taking every possible second off the clock, getting closer to that 90 minute mark. Just take the access road. And Samantha Chung heads over to the corner. Chung, a transfer from Florida. UCF actually took care of that SEC foe 3-0 earlier this year. Talk about the tough scheduling. Talking about Florida and some of those SEC schools reminds me of women's lacrosse being on the horizon for the American this spring. Looking forward to that. So ball out on the wing. And they'll add an extra, what, 23 inches? Let's see what they have in mind here. Chung steps over, and the Huskies with the first contact. And an opportunistic Kristen Scott was hoping to send that one home. Both teams with one goal this half. Santos playing with a brace, sends in the cross, but the Knights have numbers. What a beautiful ball from Taniko Kolchitsky. Just played it right to Santos. Santos tried to play it across the face of goal. Here is that ball into the top of the box. Santos, very unlucky that that one, Heyman just got enough of it. Well, two things. This first that you touched on, but the second, if that back line makes a mistake, all of a sudden they gift you one. So again, regardless of the outcome, reminder, when the clock strikes 90, stay tuned. As we will talk to the victorious head coach and our top performer today. Three goals for Stephanie Sanders of UCF. Elena Santos of UConn with a brace. Dina Orschman with a goal for the Knights as well today. And I'm to give Randy Palacios a lot of credit. Didn't start this match in goal. It was Molly Kerrigan, who's actually the starter for UConn. Palacios came on and has done a very good job. Oltiski with the last UConn goal of the day. Well, time melting down. Huskies need at least two goals here down the stretch to capture their first point in the standings. Santos. Santos for those techers. Showing some skills. 
Yeah, doing a nice job there, wins the free kick. That's a dangerous ball sent in, started to die down short of where the keeper was going to be able to safely squeeze it in. But UCF in the clear. Morris unable to get to it. See this ball played in, finds the head of a Husky. Varis off her line, but luckily for her, dangerous play, and the whistle gives the free kick to the Knights. Even if UConn does indeed come up on the losing end of this scoreboard, there's a lot they can take from this match. Down four to nothing, they came back to make it a one goal game. Very young, talented side with a lot of grit in this match. And on the other side for UCF, another victory, another conference victory. If indeed that is the case, it would put them 2-0 early in this conference season. The preseason favorite. We've been stuck on this score for about 23 minutes, much to the light of UCF. As again, Stephanie Sanders completed her hat trick, assisted by Orschman. Sanders' seventh goal now on the year. And it gave UCF a little bit of breathing room. Reclaiming some insurance. At the moment, it is Sanders' brace, that second goal that is holding up as the game winner. That was unassisted. As her first two goals were. UConn with great performance from Santos today, assisted on both of her goals by Jerzak. And then the Kolchitsky goal, assisted by Schiappa. Little over a minute to go here in stores. It was a 4-0 match early in the first half. And he thought this could be a long day. But credit the Huskies. Not giving up and making the most of match day. And the Huskies just trying to keep it at a 5-3 score line. Great tackle there, able to win it away and clear it out. And I think our viewers at home are right there in line with our thinking. Five goals between those two. Sanders with the hat trick, the second of the season for Sanders. Santos with her first career brace. And it will likely be Stephanie Sanders speaking with Bill Spaulding, who is brushing up on his German right now. Uh, Sanders with a stunning strike. Just put it on her left. Absolutely. Final seconds counting down here in the 90th minute. Eight goals on this Sunday in the American. The UCF Knights remain perfect, 2-0 to start in their title defense here in 2018. And they do it on the back of a pair of Germans combining for their four goals, including a hat trick from Stephanie Sanders as those two great players, now great coaches, cross paths once again. Fantastic match, fantastic coaches for both sides. They played against each other, now coaching against each other. And credit to both sides in this one. UCF getting off on the 4 nothing lead. UConn battling back to cut it to one, but ultimately UCF just too much. 
Hagen will stick around and have a chance to talk to Coach Rodriguez, as well as a talented knight who found the back of the net on three occasions. And for the second time today, let's check in with Bill along with Coach Zahedek. All right, thank you, Lincoln. Uh, Coach, got a little white knuckles there early on in that half, but you, you come through, get that last goal, and hold on. How are you feeling after that 90? I'm a little stressed still. <laughs> I think my heart's still racing. Um, but credit to, to UConn. Like, that's a great mentality to never let up, and they kept going and put us under pressure. And I think it's a really good lesson for our team to learn that even if you're up 4-0, the game is not over. So it's a you know credit to this conference because every team wants to win, and it's just great for our conference. You told me before the game that you're still you know building to get to your full potential. Do you feel like you had some building blocks here you can work with? Oh, absolutely. I, d I definitely think we did. Um, we scored what, five, yes, five yeah. goals, <laughs> and uh, we can learn from that. And, you know, defensively, we have some work to do. But but I'm glad that we built from the, the attacking side. All right, thanks, Coach. Congratulations on the win. Thank you very much. Uh, well, coming up next, we'll hear from Stephanie Sanders making her way over to speak with us now, our team MVP. Stephanie, congratulations on this one. Uh, I know it's been a, a busy few months for you with the uh, Under-20 World Cup as well and uh, playing with the German national team. Uh, what did it feel like today to come out and help your team pull out this big win? Oh, it's great. It's a great feeling, and I'm proud of the team that we got the win. It was hard. They came back, but we got the win, and I'm just glad we got it. What are some things you can learn from this game, especially after you jumped out to a big lead and, and then it got close there? I guess we just got to keep like um, the score and don't like let up and just keep going and try to score more goals and just be better defensively. Great. Congratulations, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Lincoln, Kit, good work today. Back to you guys. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Bill, if you manage to blow out your ACL, you too can score two hat tricks uh, less than 12 months later. What a story for Stephanie Sanders. I don't recommend that whole ACL thing. But uh, it was a day to remember and perhaps a day that some will want to repeat and relive over and over again. UCF improves now to 2-0 in conference. UConn has this weekend off coming up to rest and get everybody back in shape while the Knights will head home to play ECU and Cincinnati this next weekend. For Kit McConaughey, Bill Spalding, I'm Lincoln Rose. Big thanks to our entire ADN crew. This one goes to the Knights.